Uh, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to episode, I uh, can't forget, of the Speared Sunnies podcast. I'm your host, Lewis Spears, and, uh, yep, you know what, missed uh, missed last week, and uh, the one before that, uh, the lost the video footage, the audio is up, so, uh, guys, I'm on a, uh, I'm, I'm in tour mode, and you guys know what happens in tour mode. Uh, the thing that I love doing most in this world, the podcast, falls to the wayside. And instead, I get to do things that I'm truly passionate about, like posting and advertising and yelling and getting on planes and fucking um, uh, schedule conflicts and doing other people's podcasts and fucking waking up at 11 a.m. with a knock on the door from the fucking cunt in the that runs the hotel and goes, oh, you're supposed to check out at 10 a.m. And I went, oh, fair enough. I didn't read that. And then he goes, that's going to cost you. And then you have to uh, talk with them and, and make them feel like it was actually their fault uh, for implying that you could check out at 11 uh, when you checked in the night beforehand and the staff has changed hands. And you know that they don't know who was working last night and they are unable to talk to the person that was working last night to come in and prove that I'm lying to them so they just have to not charge you. That's what I've been doing, guys. I've been arguing with hotel staff, just stone-faced lying. You ever do that? You ever lie to someone's face and you're you're absolutely wrong? You know, I I uh, I do that. I'm going to I'm not I'm not I am not going to lie to you. I lie all the time. <laughs> and if you don't do it, uh you're lying, bro. I ne- nothing never about anything big, like never like to in important people in my life, right? Never to a friend or to a family member or to a fan, but like, bro, everyone else, you know, like, like that's, that's maybe 3% of the people in my life. 97% of the people in my life, you, bro, you're getting lied to. (laughs) You are, you're not getting the truth. That's out of me. Sorry. Uh, you're going to, you're going to get lied to if it makes my life even slightly more convenient, you know? Like, not even marginally, just like a little bit better. Just tell a big fat fib straight to your face, straight face, say it with the most conviction ever, and you might even know that I'm lying, but I'm saying it with so much confidence that you feel like it would be embarrassing for you to try and argue with me because this person is clearly lying, but they seem so confident about it, maybe I'm wrong. That's that's what I'll do in, in my life. That's my hobby, bro. Just fucking straight up telling porky pies to strangers to make my life slightly more convenient. What's a good one? Yeah, the good one is the, is the checkout one. You get an hour free if you just fucking lie through your teeth. Um, that's a good one. Save you, save you a bit of money there. Um, fuck, there's heaps of good ones that they... You know when you have to think of something and um, it just escapes you? Um... Oh yeah, when 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 Virgin fucking delayed my flight, send him an email saying, "Oh, I was promised a refund." <laughs> and hey, man, you get that shit because they know, right? They're not allowed to fucking tell you. They're not allowed to promise you that refund. But if you if you tell them that you were promised that refund, you're getting that shit for sure. I called Optus the other day. I was like, oh, hey, I went in store. Never went in store. Why would I ever go to an Optus store? Yeah, hey, Optus, I went into the Optus store and the guy told me that if I called you, you guys would actually give me double the data for the same price. (laughs) And I got that shit, bro. I got that shit. Yes, sir, I did. Didn't go to the Optus store, never would. You just call them with a big fat lie and say, oh, Virgin's, uh, Virgin Mobile is offering this. Um, I give me my double data, not Virgin, Vodafone. Hey, Vodafone's offering more data for uh, more money. But uh, so I'm going to go and do that. But I went in store and they told me that if I stay with you guys for um, the same price, they'll give me that data without charging me extra. Otherwise, I'll leave to Vodafone. And they go, are you sure you were told that, sir? That doesn't sound like something we would say. I said, oh, I was promised. The man, the man put down everything he was holding. He shut the store for me and he said, Lewis Spears, I swear to you, if we don't give you shit for free, I will kill myself. And that's what he said, sir. So I don't know what to tell you. You're fucking listening to me. I called in. Why would I call in, sit on hold for 20 minutes just to lie to you about an interaction that I definitely has at the Optus store? 
Uh, and then they go, sorry, so which store was it at? And I go, panic, and start Googling. And then I go, excuse me, are you calling me a liar, sir? And then I go, oh, it's Chadsden. <laughs> I remember now. And who was working? Oh, I can't remember. Not sure, but it was definitely a human uh, who spoke English and he was wearing an Optus uniform. Does that narrow it down? And they go, no, it doesn't. And I go, well, I guess you can't get anybody in trouble then, can you? And the world fucking spins. You know, no one gets hurt. Multinational gives me shit for free. And I go on posting about my tour, which is on sale now, loosespears.com slash gigs. I got Melbourne uh, on Saturday night which is in the past, if you're listening to this on Sunday, unless you're a Patreon supporter, you get it fucking early. Um, so that's good. Uh, but I have that one sold out. I assume it was incredible, the best show I've ever done. Uh, and now the best show I've ever done will be Saturday in Melbourne. I got 70 tickets left as of recording this. Actually, as of three days ago when they told me the report and then I told everyone that I had 70 seats left. So I might have 20 left, who knows. Um, but yeah, the final Melbourne show, I'm not adding any others, uh, is on sale. Loosebeers.com slash gigs is going to be fucking huge. Massive night, man. That's that bro. That is 450 people twice. That's next level. That's the, I didn't realize this. That's the biggest show I've ever done. I thought the, um, the Brisbane one I did last year, which is 420. I thought that was the biggest. And then I was like, oh, I guess, I guess I won't top at this tour because I'm doing extra shows instead of bigger venues. But nah, man. Comics Lounge, when you pack it out, because you can you can sit the Comics Lounge different ways. It can be 200, it can be uh, 300, or if you really fucking get all of the tables out of there, that shit can be 450, and that's what it's going to be when I roll in. So it's going to be sweet. Uh, make sure you grab your tickets at loosespears.com. Um, what else has been going on? Uh, i got a bunch of other cities. Adelaide, Perth. Adelaide and Perth, actually, weirdly, for those two places, they never book ahead. They're filling up. So if you're Adelaide and Perth, grab yours. Albury, hey, man, it's not gimpy, but it's also probably not going to sell out. So <laughs> that one's, that one's going to be nice and intimate, but the regional ones are always good fun. Something fucked will happen in Albury. I, I, uh, I know that. Man, someone treat, tweeted me the most infuriating shit. Um... See, you guys think that, oh, Lewis has uh, missed an episode. He might be a little bit rusty. Nah, bro. This is the podcast. It's me uh, talking about lying to people and then complaining about tweets that I get from people who genuinely like my stuff and I don't appreciate it enough. But you know what? That's what you guys signed up for. Some can't. Where are we? I'm just looking on my on my Twitter here. You see that fucking viral thing that I did on Twitter? Just trashing CNN, the news network. Fuck, bro. That made me realize, thank fuck, that I don't do political comedy very often. Like, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll trash feminism, I'll trash the news every now and then, but I'm not, I'm not like, I'm not like tr ever trying to be like, I'm, I'm correct and this is why you should fucking believe me because I don't like, I don't like watching that shit, I don't like making that shit and I feel like a lot of people are just sick of, even if it's, even if it's correct, right? Even if it's something like, hey, I reckon women should be allowed to drive. Like, yeah, cool. But I don't want to fucking hear about it for 40 minutes. You know what I mean? Like, just... I, sometimes I just want to laugh about shit no matter what I believe in. And I, I, feel, I really feel good providing that for people. Like, making fun of all sides without trying to fucking preach. Like, the worst is when you're watching some really good comedy and you're laughing and they're, and they're going bang, 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 punchline, punchline, punchline. And then they go... But let's get serious for a moment. It's like, let's not, bro. Let's just laugh. Hey, let's not. <laughs> oh, oh, uh, children are in cages. Oh, well, I guess I'm going to cry now. It's like, that's the news's job, okay? To make everybody sad. I'm just here to make everybody laugh and forget and, and not change anything. You know, that's what I'm really trying to do is encourage um, complacency in the public to do fuck all and shit talk anyone trying to change anything. And a lot of people who heard that are actually going to take that seriously and think that that's what I actually think. And that amuses me a lot. It's just me throwing out shit that I don't actually believe in and then see what people actually think of me. <laughs> that's, that's, that's what's great. Like, so many people think, oh, bro, I love Lewis because he hates the left. Or other kinds of like, bro, I love Lewis because he pisses off right-wing people. And it's like, nah, man. Um... I, I just like making everybody mad and everybody laugh, you know? You might laugh and then 
20 minutes later in the show, you'll be like, ha ha, oh, that one's about me. <laughs> That's me, bro. Anyway, I've been rambling while I'm trying to find this fucking joke. What did they say? Oh, look, they said something along the lines of, oh, oh, that's right. I, th I, can't, I might be getting the towns wrong, but it said the gist of it was, bro, why are you going to Albury? You should come to Wagga. It's only an hour down the road. It's like, oh, okay, cunt. So what I should do, me, right, the guy who's attracting like a hundred people, and flying three people and paying for venue hire, it's much easier for me to move that entire operation an hour down the road to you where I will sell less tickets just so you don't have to drive for an hour when you already live in a regional town. You probably have to drive six hours just to look at a photo of a hospital. <laughs> like, you travel, bro, not me. Who, who, like, if they wanted to see something, wouldn't go an hour out of their way? Isn't that standard? Even for me, I live in the city. If I want to go anywhere, it's a fucking hour. And you live in Wagga Wagga, dude. So I don't think you're spoiled for choice of entertainment. It's either watching me tell jokes or going down the street and watching the crackheads fight. Also, the crackheads are your parents. <laughs> Man, I had a, I had, I've been dealing with some bullshit. So I put my merch on my website, um, the No Slide Season merch. I put like a limited selection of it online because I'm selling most of it at the shows, but I thought I'd give a chance to people who, who can't see a show because they live in a different country or evidently fucking wogga wogga an hour away, right? So I do that. And then someone tweets me and goes, bro, why is your sh international shipping $18? And I read him and I was like, I read the tweet. And I was like, Fuck off, idiot. My international shipping is not $18. Went on the website. Oh, <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> so I'm like, oh, shit. Well, that's way too expensive. So I need to work this out. So I've, I've always I've always had the philosophy of I don't... It's a fuck. Bro, did you, see, did you hear me like right before the camera cut out? Did you hear me start the sentence of, oh, fuck, the camera's low battery. <laughs> then it just died. Um... I'm all plugged in now. It's been a couple of minutes, so I don't know what I was talking about. But before I turn the camera on, Keelan goes, Oi, did you see that um, Trisha Paytas video where she wants to be transgender? And uh, that's the funniest shit ever. But also, I do sympathize with Trisha Paytas because if I had nipples that looked like a cross-eyed, retarded child, I would want to cut them off too. You know what I mean? Like, I'd be like, let's just reset. I've obviously had 37 tit jobs and, and all of them were performed by blind people. Or maybe the doctor doing it was cross-eyed, so to him, they look normal. Did you see her fucking nudes on Twitter? The video that she posted? Have you seen that? You haven't seen it? Bro, look it up right now. That's an order. <laughs> this is the kind of shit that might happen, you know? If, if you work for me one day, I will force you to look at porn on Twitter. I command it. As if you'd miss that. Yeah, yeah, I'm seeing it. Oh, dude, I gotta look it up now. It's, she posted it herself, so it's not like revenge porn or anything. It's like legit. Trisha Paytas, naked. Oh, this is... <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that fucked? Is that? Yeah, dude. Not good. Not good. I don't know, I don't know who made them, right? But it wasn't God. <laughs> Dude, man, and you know what? I sympathize with her, the poor bitch. You know what? Everybody needs to leave her alone. She, everybody, someone needs to come and take her YouTube channel away. I feel sorry for those people that are just like so clearly up and down and up and down all the time. Like that's why I rarely make fun of them. I mean, I do realize that I just said her tits looked like they were made by a cross-eyed doctor, but I'm not, you know, she probably knows that too. You know what? That's why she wants to get rid of them. But... I, do, I feel sorry for those people who have YouTube channels because it's just like watching someone like burn. It's like Kanye without the money, you know? Like that's the saddest shit ever. If Kanye didn't have all of that money 
And also, I feel like Kanye had about like 20, 30 years of at least being kind of stable. He was always a bit loony, but he was never as up and down as he was now, right? He's bipolar. He was he was never cycling as frequently and as and as hugely as he does now. So if he didn't have money and and the back catalog, you know, like no one's like, man, Trisha Paytas is crazy and her tits look weird, but how good was college dropout? <laughs> she doesn't have that backlog of quality entertainment that Kanye does. That's what I'm trying to say. Here. Trisha Paytas is Kanye West without the talent. That's all she or money or regular nipples. And that's really why Kanye can do all the crazy shit that Trisha tries to do without just copying the flack. Or he does get the flack, but people will stand up for him and go, yeah, but, you know, he also made beautiful, dark, twisted fantasy. You know what I mean? He made Nicki Minaj. How good was her verse on that album? Kanye did that shit, you know? Like, Nicki Minaj isn't contributing to any of Trisha Paytas' art. I wonder what Nicki Minaj's nipples look like. Probably much better. <laughs> oh, man. What was I talking about before I started this? Oh, shipping. Oh, guys, we're back on track to the most important entertaining part of the podcast. Me yelling about admin and shipping, right? So, my shipping was $18. Fucked. Too expensive. But also... I was saying before it cut out, I, I, I don't ever want to make a profit from the shipping. I just want to make a profit from the t-shirt, right? So I make my t-shirt, it costs me whatever, and then I charge you whatever. The shipping, what you pay, is what I'm being charged. So I was like, that's fucked. Why am I charging $18 for international shipping? Bro, that's what it was costing me. I went to the post office the other day. I shipped something to America it cost me like 20 something dollars. So I was actually undercutting myself on that. And, and I shipped something to Israel. I lost money. Like the shipping was actually 30 something dollars. And I was like, something is going wrong. So I went through and I fixed everything. And I've worked out that now the shipping cost me $12.95. And I was like, well, $13 is a weird number. I'll just charge 12, whatever. I'll eat that 95 cents. You're welcome, all right? International cunts, go and get your t-shirt. And that's 12 Australian, which is like fucking $1 in American money. I think it's like eight bucks American. So, you know, reasonable, huh? But to set up that, and I also set up pickup from the warehouse. And to set that up, they're like, okay, you can ship internationally, but for your first three deliveries, you have to be there to give the driver your ID to prove that it's you who's shipping these products overseas so it's all legit. I'm like, that makes total sense. Security is the utmost priority. I will be there. When do you want me to be there? And they go, all right, we want you to be there between 8 a.m. and 4 p.m. I was like, you fucking can't, right? So I had to get here at 8 a.m. Normally I get here at 10. And I know all of you, all of you like, Working class people are going, oh, he had to get there at 8 a.m. I have to wake at, wake up at 4 a.m. so I can drive two hours to get there at 6 a.m. Yeah, shush, all right? But you get to go home at 4. No, I work at, until 5.36. I was like, cool, bro. I got a nighttime job, right? So that's hard for me. I love that, that I'm just trashing the working class and all my job is sitting here and saying cunt and ragging on someone's nipples. Although, let's be honest, nipples is all you guys talk about in the world. <laughs> so we got the same job. I've just lost like 20% of my audience. Um, it, like everyone with calloused hands just turned the podcast off. Um, so, what am I saying? Yeah, so I'm like, all right, I'll, I'll get here at eight, which is a bitch because I was out late the other night. And, I, you know, I, I, I sleep really late because I perform late. So I don't like getting up early. But I get here at eight. And then uh, the guy doesn't come and it's fucking 10. I'm like, okay, well, I should have just got here at 10. And I've already, I've already rolled the dice on that before. I remember when I was doing 
when I first set up shipping and I had to meet the driver. Remember, I got there at 10 and he'd been there since 8. He was just waiting around for two hours and he fucking, where you fucking been, mate? Well, I've been here for two hours. And I was like, oh, fuck. I felt like such an asshole because I bet that made him late for the rest of the day. So I didn't want to do that. But anyway, they didn't get there till 10. And I was like, well, fuck. And then I waited around and 4 p.m. hit. They had not come. And then I checked the notification. It goes, oh, we've rescheduled it to Monday. I'm like, oh, good. Another 8 a.m. start for me on a Monday. After my fucking shows, that'll make it even harder. It sucks, man. Um, but at the end of the day, my job is talking about nipples and not like doing roofing in 60 degree heat. So, whatever. I think I'm still, I think I'm still on top. Um, what else do I want to talk about here? Man, I watched the, I watched the best video so I love watching videos that are filmed, like public videos that are filmed in New York. Not pranks, right? Just heinous shit that happens in public in New York and it's just normal there. Like walking around there, I, I do a bit in it, so I'm not going to do it in my show. Walking around there, I saw some of the rudest shit ever. They're like the rudest people by, but it, by necessity, right? So many people, you can't be polite. Everyone is a cunt. I was talking to Andrew Schultz's... Um, <clears throat> guy opener mark gagnon and he's not from new york but he's been he's been living there and he was saying that living there made him more assertive because you just have to be a bit of an asshole to survive in that city because if you're not a douche people just take advantage of you or push or or whatever everyone's just out for themselves trying to win right so i love watching like public videos of what happens in new york because you see some of the f most fucked shit the one the one that i be, keep re-watching is there's this woman and it's on Twitter, right? So the comments are the best bit. There's this woman, yeah, and uh, she's homeless, and she's smoking crack on a packed train, like a packed crack pipe. She's smoking crack on the train, and everyone is like, hey, don't hotbox the train with crack, because everyone will get high on the way to work right? So she's smoking crack out of a fucking pipe in front of everyone. Everyone's yelling at her. Like, you know, when I see some shit happen in Australia, everyone just goes, oh, some shit's happening. I won't say anything. And we just all ignore it. Every single cunt on that New York train was yelling at this woman smoking crack, right? If I saw someone smoking crack on a Melbourne train, even if they blew it in my face, I would inhale and say thanks. Like, that's just the culture here. We don't call shit out in public, we wait to do it, unt un we wait, we wait to, to vent our true feelings until we see the Prime Minister on like the big screen at a sports game, that's the only time we'll ever yell at a stranger, is like, oh, it's these in charge, boo, but then if someone blew crack into my face on a train, I'd say nothing, <laughs> right, so anyway, this woman, she's smoking crack on the train, and and like three dudes grab her and throw her off the train and everyone's helping. Like she won't move. She's holding on and they're, they're not hitting her. Like right? they're not like brutalizing her. They're just trying to drag her off the train because she won't smoke crack off the train. They're not like, hey, don't smoke crack. They're like, hey, don't smoke crack here. Do it somewhere else, right? Do it wherever you want to do it, but don't do it on the train. She's like, no. I would like to smoke crack on the train. I don't know why she has an English accent, but for this bit, she does, right? I would like to smoke my crack pipe on the train with all the passengers, and I would like to pass it on to the children that are in the carriage with me. Perhaps a pregnant lady. Fuck up her womb. That's what I would like to do. She's so high, she's turned English. Um, and I also haven't showered for days, so I don't know what's more, what's more heinous, the smell of my crack or the smell of my pits. Just kidding. Trick question. It's my pussy. Uh, <laughs> right? So she's smoking crack on the train. And they're trying to drag her off. She's going, no. No, I'm staying. I'm staying. And uh, then everyone... It's like the most... It really made my soul smile. Every single person on the train stood up and started working together to throw her shit out the door. <laughs> they grabbed their bag. Boom! Out the door. They grabbed their shit out the door. Trolley. Clothes. This, that, if she had a dog, it would have gone out the window, ah! right? They just threw all her shit off the train and they were like, well, you can either smoke crack with us or you can go and get your shit. 
And uh, she wanted to smoke crack on the train still. She was that stubborn. Like, you've got to give it to her. That's temerity, you know? That's persistence. Clearly, it's not getting her anywhere positive, but she's going somewhere, right? I want to know what she, where she was going, what was so important that, that not only did she have to combine her travel with crack, but, like, she couldn't smoke crack and then get on the train. She had to smoke crack on the train. Uh, she also, like, wherever she was going was so much more important than everything she owned in the world like if i lose if i lose some files or a shoe whatever i got shoes at home if someone throws my if even if i lose my backpack that sucks right i might have my computer in there but but when but when i go home i get my keys and i i put them in the lock and i open the lock and then i step into a house you know what i mean like i've got a house and i can sleep in a bed if I'm homeless and I lose my backpack, that's my house. <laughs> it's gone. I've lost my, my beds in there. All of my clothes are in there. I might have some playing cards. That's all the crack that I got for the week gone. So that's important. I want to know where she was going. What was so important that she couldn't get off the train or even catch the next one, you know? But anyway, they, they, they eventually, she doesn't want to get off the train. They drag her off the train and they throw her off the train and then she tries to get back on, the doors close, and then the video ends, and everyone goes, yeah, woo, we got the cracking off the train, right? And I watched that, and I was like, oh, that's funny. Well, not funny, it's kind of fucked, but it was it was definitely entertaining. Like, like it was the, I, I feel like I, I had, after watching that, I had the same feeling that I feel like the Romans would have when they went home from a gladiatorial, like, game. With like when you're in the spectators, where you you in the moment when you're watching it, you're like, kill him, kill him, yeah, fuck yeah, woohoo, violence. <clears throat> and then they would go home and they'd sit in their bed, and then they'd be like, wow, that was someone's real life. I'm kind of sad now. I felt like that watching the Twitter video. I was like, whoa, there goes their bed, woo, there goes their trolley. See you later, clothes. Drag her off the train. There we go. And then the doors shut, and I was like, wow, that's a real human. Poor bitch. I hope she's okay. But, but I guess she, but that's, you know, that's life. But then I read the comments, right? And dude, it's Twitter. So of course the fucking social justice warriors had to stand up for this chick who was smoking crack on a train. Let me try and find it. Smoking crack on train. Where is it? videos crack on train oh here we go oh there we are she's like i'm going to the next stop you ain't going to take me you're going to drag me off i'm going to the next stop just walk to the next stop you're on crack you could be in there faster than the train you're smoking crack. If you got off at the next stop, you could just teleport, bro. You don't need the train, right? <clears throat> so this this dude and this woman work together to drag this, this person smoking crack off the train. Uh, and everyone just starts throwing her shit at the door. It's got to be, it has to be at least six, seven, eight people all helping throw her shit. There's bottles going everywhere, cardboard boxes, plastic bags. Her ass is out for some reason. Everyone's just working together using teamwork. You know what it's like? It's when I, it's like when, um, you ever seen that video of when the wasp goes into the beehive and starts eating bees and the bees take it for a little bit, but then they all go one, two, three, kill that cunt. And then they all jump on the wasp and they kill him together. It's like that. But, but instead of the wasp, they're throwing her shit off the train while she tries to smoke crack. Right. And so, Someone, right, replies to it. It's Twitter because of, so of course there's this comment. Someone replies and they go, they are evil. They deserve everything bad coming their way. Treating her like she's an animal. I don't care what she was doing. She didn't touch anyone. This is the weirdest shit I've ever seen from my own people. Yuck. She was smoking crack on a train. You, it's like, it's like, oh, she, yeah, okay, she wasn't touching anyone, but you know what she was doing? 
smoking crack on a train in the day. Do you know how if if you permitted that shit to happen, it was a packed train. She's smoking crack on a train. Do you know how many people would get like secondhand high from that shit? Could you imagine if the only thing I was trying to do that day was get to my fucking office job that I already don't like. I work in a call center, right? But not only do I have to go to the job that I fucking hate every single day, I also have to smoke crack on the way because a homeless woman decided to do it too. I'm like, oh, I guess I'm going to work off my face on secondhand crack smoke. Could you imagine walking into your office off your face on crack and your boss goes, "Uh, yeah, mate, um, you clearly have been smoking crack before work. And you go, oh, no, no, I wasn't smoking crack. There was a homeless woman on the train smoking crack and I was breathing it secondhand. So I'm not a crack addict. I'm a secondhand crack addict. And then your boss goes, okay, I understand that, right? But... Uh, because you're high on crack, you've actually killed the receptionist. So I'm going to have to let you go, James. Oh, fuck. I guess it's because I was smoking crack on the train. It's like, dude, there could have been children in the carriage. There could have been a pregnant woman, right? That could, that could actually kill her baby. Do you know what I mean? Like, only Twitter could you find someone defending the person smoking crack on the train. And it's like, yeah, we have to help homeless people. We have to help people addicted to drugs. You know what we don't have to do? Let them do it on a train where people who are not addicted to drugs could get addicted to that shit just from the secondhand smoke. It's like, yeah, we've got to be good people, but also not that good. It's like, what, what, do you want, what do you want me to do? If I see a homeless, a homeless person like smoking crack on a fucking train, blowing it into a toddler's face, what am I supposed to do? Give her a lighter? Do you need a hand? Would you like some more? Maybe give a pipe to the toddler so he can join in? Hey, let's all smoke crack, and then there won't be any crack smokers. They'll just be normal people. Insane. And someone replies, I don't understand why you would put your hands on someone just for being an addict. Please explain. It's like, it's, people weren't like, oh, excuse me, do you smoke crack? Oh yeah, I actually have a crippling addiction. Everyone, let's bash it. It wasn't that. It's like, oh, you're smoking crack on the train in front of everyone. Don't do that, please. It's like so clear from the video, the peaceful option was given to her where someone was like hey stop doing that and she was like i'm gonna keep doing it and then another person was like hey stop doing that she's like i'm gonna keep doing that and then the whole carriage was like hey stop smoking crack i don't want that secondhand smoke and then she went oh yeah and then everyone was like all right we tried off the train let's throw a shit out crazy so that's what i've been doing with my week man oh hang on jazz is calling me one sec all right all right i'm back <clears throat> to the left, to the left. Chuck the crackhead out the train to the left. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's do miscellaneous bit at the end, shall we? I gotta get out of here soon because I got be these shows coming up. I got a gig tonight. All right, uh, uh, some miscellaneous bit at the end. If you don't know, it's the worst part of the podcast. It's the part where I answer questions sent in by you, the listener. Um, if you need some life advice, if you have a funny story to tell me, if you uh, want to contact the show, be on the show, send an email to podcast at com. That's podcast at Um All right, here we are. This one's titled, I think I only have time for this one. It seems like it's going to be a long one. This one's titled, but I think it's going to be a banger. This one's titled, how many times am I going to start a new sentence before I read you the title? This one's titled, I don't know, let's see, could be seven. This one's titled, it's going to be eight. This one's titled, weirdest blowjob of my life. Um, Hey Luke, love the podcast. I've been listening for the past year or so. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, I'm coming to the Melbourne show this weekend. Mad can't, and I'm stoked to see you for the second time. Legend, return visitor. They're the best guys. Keep killing it. I guarantee no slide season is going to be great. Well, look, man, that's a that's a big call because that's not in your control. I might show up there and I may have shared the train with a crackhead so I could just kill everyone, you know? 
they could hallucinate, like, bro, it's an audience full of dragons. I must save the world. And then that that's it. That'll be the last show I ever do. But, you know, something part of history for sure. Guys, I'm going to tell jokes. I probably won't just kill you. Probably. Depends on my train ride. This is a bit of a fuck story from years ago when I was only 17. I was at my girlfriend at the time's house for her 18th birthday, and she decided to go big with it. Go big with it. Inviting everyone who she had ever known, including two people she'd fucked before. Yeah, that's the that's just the worst, isn't it? I dated a girl like that. So I'm going to have all of my friends over. And then you're at the party and you slowly realize that none of them were actually friends. They were all just like Eskimo bros. Um, we were only... We were only... How fucked is that Eskimo bros saying, man? I never thought about that before. I just thought about it. The The reason why it's Eskimo brothers... Oh no, maybe I'm overthinking it. Okay, I'm going to tell you what I... I'll tell you what... I'll tell you what I've just realized that it probably is, and then I'll tell you what I thought that it was. So what I've just realized that it probably is, is it's you Eskimo brothers because you've both chilled in the same spot, being the pussy. So that's like an igloo, yeah? You've both... You're both in there. So that's almost definitely what it is. What I thought it was, and then now realizing it's probably not, is because the the igloo would be made out of ice and ice is white like cum maybe it's both let me know in the comments below um uh, we were only dating around four months so i couldn't really get mad with her inviting these two guys that i hardly even knew Uh, yeah you can anyway throughout the night everyone was getting very drunk including myself and i ended up having an argument with one of one of the guys she'd previously had sex with as he was trying to come on to her, <coughs> her at the party after all the bickering and shit he got way too wasted and then ended up passing out on the couch after attempting to bottle me that's so 17 year old party my girlfriend and i went and stayed in her room oh that's insane someone tried to kill you and you're like ah oh, we'll let him sleep in the house see that's what i mean that's so australian it's like oh this guy tried to fucking crack a bottle over my head but i'm sure you know he'll be fine asleep in my house while intoxicated and no one else is here that's fine dude throw that crackhead out the door <clears throat> sorry i'm uh losing my voice doing a lot of talking um uh where are we He passed out on her couch. My girlfriend went and stayed in her room and had to share the room with one of her good friends and her boyfriend. Um, The good friend's boyfriend and his girlfriend. A bit of backstory on the friend is that she also kept jokingly hinting at the three of us having a threesome and how fun and silly it would be. But I always shut that down as my girlfriend was a six and the friend was on a good day, a three. (laughs) That's good. And uh, that's so funny. Um, yeah, don't lower, don't lower your standards, bro. Just for the three O's. So, you know, see, you see, some people do that where they're like, oh, like they just slide in with the threesome. They're like, they have a beautiful girlfriend or a beautiful partner, and then they just get whoever will do it. Like whoever will be number three, and a lot of the time they are themselves a three. That's why they're doing it because they're because they're they're not doing it for the threesome experience. They're doing it to get someone, and they're like, "Fuck, one would be good, but I guess I'll take two. Um, because taking two is better than taking who I can get, which is generally twos. The 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 other couple ended up sleeping on the couch at the bottom of the bed, so it was pretty hard to try and get laid when others were in the room. Yeah, especially if one of the others would probably want to join in. At one point after a while, my girlfriend decided, fuck it, and we're going to have sex, as she thought the other two people had fallen asleep. She starts sucking my dick. I look past the bed for a second, and I realize her friend is hardcore watching everything that's going on and was definitely into it. Bro, that's scary. That's like, you know, when you wake up and you're half asleep and you think you see eyes watching you, right? You think you see a monster at the end of your bed, but really it's just like your own foot. But then, but that's real, right? Where the monster is actually there. She looks like a monster and your foot. <laughs> oh, fuck. Um, okay. Uh... Uh, I realize her friend is hard. This is structured so poorly. Can you cunts please use paragraphs? Otherwise I get lost. 
Um, as I think to myself, what the fuck is going on? She proceeds to remove her dress and get naked. Then she decides to wake her boyfriend up and starts sucking his dick. The whole time I'm sitting there and I have no idea what to do. After me and my girlfriend had finished having sex, we went to sleep. And before I went to sleep, I see the friend looking into my eyes again. Oh, no. The next day, <laughs> so she wasn't interested in her boyfriend at all. She was interested in you. Poor bastard. Not you, the other guy. The next day, I woke up and hadn't said anything as I had no idea what actually happened. Her friend ended up saying later on, the next day in my ear, that looked yummy, we should do it sometime. And I quickly told her to fuck off and I never spoke to her properly ever again. I never ended up telling my girlfriend at the time. But fuck it. And then he's written something really mean that I won't read. Hopefully, not a bad story uh, to, keep, to make you laugh. Have a shit one, Lou, and keep up the good work. Oh, that's funny. Um, yeah, I mean, look, bro, I don't think there was, I don't think there was anything wrong with what the, the, I feel like that what you've written to the ugly girl is not cool. She didn't do anything wrong. You saw her watching and you didn't stop. That's consent, bro. You were fully conscious and aware. And then you went, I'm going to keep doing it. That's so, um, I think that she's actually the winner in this situation. Um, that's very funny. Fuck, that's funny. If you guys would like to send me a story or a question or if you need live advice or if you want my opinion on a thing or a news topic or something happening online or Trisha Paytas' nipples, send uh, an email to uh, podcast at com and I'll get back to them ASAP. Make sure you come see me in Melbourne. I have fuck all tickets left to the second show. I am not adding another one. That is my final Lewis Spears show for the year uh, in Melbourne. Um and so will all of the other shows that I'm doing. They're the last time I'll be doing No Slide Season in your area. Um, so, yeah, that's great. Make sure you check out the Luke and Lewis show. We, di we did a great episode with Andrew Schultz, uh, my bro from New York. He's an amazing comedian. Opening him and hosting the shows were an incredible experience. I think you can catch me in his dropping in uh, series that he did of, of the shows in Melbourne and Sydney, I think is what it is on his channel. It's not much of me in it. It's just me laughing like a maniac. Um, so that's going to do it there pretty much. Uh, support me on Patreon if you want early access to everything that I upload. Um, there's a terrible TV on there right now with I'm Alex that you can watch. And... Uh, yeah, man, I'm going to end it there. All right, I'll see you guys soon. I'm losing my voice. Merchandise available at loosebeers.com slash merch. See you later. Have a shit one. <coughs> Can't. <coughs>